you know, it's just a beautiful cool. thing. You know, that's why I said before, if you ever want to use me for content or something, I think sometimes like the synergy is just like seeing your heart pour out. is a beautiful thing. And your heart pours all the time, you know, but when I see it come from 98 to 110, I'm like, fuck yeah, that's the money, you know? So like, that's, you know, I appreciate you sharing that with me. And just know I'm always here. You want to dig deep in any of this, however you can use me, but I'll play saxophone. I, you need I, don't, a special I don't need you for that. I need you to play saxophone on your ex and just rock your solo, dude. Like, yeah. you can create your solo as creatively as you want, man. It's your instrument. You jam your part. But jam your part, not everybody else's. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm going to write about this a little bit, Chuddy. Yeah. I'm always looking for, if you got simple tips, you don't have to get into it. But if you have simple tips on, you know, the steps off the floor, like, fuck, you know, like, why don't you fucking do this to get off the fucking floor? But I, I'm doing it slowly. You know, and, uh, I, I got a tip for you. Stand up. Oh, no. We, we overcomplicate this stuff way too often. A lot of times the simplicity is genius to all of it. If you feel like I'm stuck on the floor, well, is there something on top of you? You're like, no, it's mostly just me kicking my own ass. Well, why don't you try standing up? Yeah. Good words. And you use your tools because you have a whole group of guys that you can call and we'll pull you up. We'll pull you up. Yeah. Well, if we don't know you're yeah, down Richie. there, we can't help you. Yeah, I hey, guess. Richie, you got my number, man. Call me anytime, dude. Sure, I will. Um, I guess that's like a, to, to just share on that. Like, that's something that I'm walking through now is like trust, you know, and I'm not I'm not ditching it like I used to as much where it's like, I can't trust anybody. But I just feel like really, you know, confused more in myself, like how I can trust people and like how much I can share and like lines and boundaries. And it's like, I'm still sit I'm sitting on the ground within trust. I'm like, I, I don't know Let's this do trust thing. And I want to get off the ground and trust people. And I keep on trying. Let's do it. I think that's a good one. Trust is a pretty important one. It's, it's a fundamental piece. It's something that we all need. Let's get into trust today because without trust we have nothing there is no dynamic there's no friendship there's no brotherhood there's no marriage there's no dating there's no nothing without trust you don't have a single thing there's nothing you can have without it so let's talk about it let's start off with just the opinions before i get into training on it what the fuck is trust if i want it and i need it what the fuck is it how do i get it like, what is it? I feel like for me, the first thing that comes up and there might be more layers is like safety because like why it's there is if I'm safe or not, you know, and if I mean, if I have trust and it's open and it's like nobody, you know, nobody can fuck with me, then it's fine. So it's like how my and then safety is I don't know. Safety is up to me. Trust is really I thought that I got it <laughs> and I don't. The other thing that I'm curious about is how do you express it? How do I say like, hey, Rick, we're just meeting each other. Trust is really important. Here's this thing called trust. Let's work on it and grow it. You know, you'd probably be like, dude, get the fuck away from me. I don't even know you, you know? So then I'm like, all right, how do we, how do I start this thing but not talk about it? So that's what I have to share about it. All right. So that's your definition. Anybody else got a different definition of what trust is? That was a very neurodiverse definition. <laughs> Someone that gives me unyielding loyalty. That's what I do. Kind of like tick for tat for me. Loyalty. That's mine. Gotcha. I got safety for Richard, loyalty for Phil. Anybody else? What is trust? What is it? Accountable. Someone is accountable. Someone I can count on. I have to accountable, but someone I know I can count on. I, I want to just take mine back. I don't want to over talk, but I think that the safety is a fear thing. And I just, I want to say with pride, like, I don't know. Fair enough. <laughs> Anybody else want to try to explain like, this is what trust is. This is how it works. This is, I, I've heard somebody this, how about this? Anybody ever heard the saying you have to earn trust. Trust has to be earned. Anybody ever heard that before? Yep. All right. How many how many of what do I have to earn? 
Like, like Donald, I want to be able to trust you, but I got to earn it. How yep. much, how much do I have to earn of what? Um, got to earn respect. Respect falls into trust. Cool. So earn what? Like how many, what's the measurement? Do I have to earn like seven? Do I have to earn 10? Is it 20? And, and yeah, earn you have to earn hundred percent. You got to earn it. Cool. I got a hundred percent of what though? I don't even, I'll do it. I want to do it. I want to, how many do I have to get 20 or 50? How many of whatever, what do I have to even get so that I have enough to be earned? What do I have to do? Show, show the person that you can trust them. Yeah. How I want to do it. Like I'm in, give me the, give me the steps or the practice or the, the what do I have to do? Like, what well, is if it? You broke, if you broke trust, you have to rebuild the trust and show them that. I just want, I, I don't even have to break it. I just want to start with you right now. I want to, I want to get it. How do I earn it? And how many do I have to get? So I earned enough to earn it. Maybe 20. 20 what? 20%, maybe. <laughs> so 20, 20%. Of what thing do I have to have? Twenty percent of of a gallon, twenty percent of a mile, twenty percent of an outfit, twenty percent of what? I don't even know. Well, shit. Commitment. Twenty percent of Angel says commitment. Twenty percent of commitment. Does that get me started? So I have to. Yeah. I have Sorry. to give you. So wait a second. I have to just give you trust and give commitment. But somehow. I have to earn it. I'm supposed to give it. I give you commitment, but for you to give me that for having your trust, it has to be earned, but I don't know how much I have to earn and I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I don't know what it is, but yeah. I need it. Yeah. Anybody else have an idea? What the hell is trust? What is this thing? It almost seems that. like I get a... go go. The, the thing that the thing that I see is like you know with the, with the earning part, it like we're developing we develop an armor in this course where we don't have to have people earn it. We can give it. We can give it. Give people trust. Like let we can trust people. And if they break it, we can use our armor to deflect their shit coming at us. So I don't think that we have to make people earn it right off the bat. It's the fact that we have to allow, we have to trust people initially, but have our armor ready if they do break it. And then we can deflect the shit from there. We don't have to have people earn it. You can't earn something that's, you don't have a value of. Like this, like if there's a, if I say, you know, do this and I'll give you a hundred dollars. You know what the fuck you're working for. You know how to do it. Cause I'm telling you to dig that hole for a hundred dollars. It's, it's so subjective that when we say earn your trust, like, well, how about we just give them the benefit of the doubt to start with and use, use our armor and cross the bridge of, you know, deceit when it comes, because that's the only way that we're going to actually get through to anybody and connect with anybody or anything like that. So we have to lower our lower our armor for a little bit. I'm not saying get rid of it or put it up on the wall, but we lower a little bit, let it come in, and then if it's if it's broken, then we cross that bridge. We figure out what the fuck we got to do from there. Do I just put a boundary in and totally, you know, disassociate from this person, or do I say, hey, now you have to earn that shit back, and this is the way you do it. You're gonna show up. You're gonna do the fucking work. You're gonna, you know, treat me with respect, or however it is that you feel that they're gonna earn it, and you go from there. But to have somebody start off with, you know, a zero and not be not not know how to actually get to a hundred, uh, I don't want that to happen to me. So why why do we push that on somebody else? Well played. You said it's not earned, it's given. And being able to give the benefit of the doubt, and if somebody does do some sort of a some sort of a, a mistake or a goof up or a betrayal, well now I set boundaries and adjust my armor accordingly. Right? Yes. 
Cool. I mean, that's other than that, we're just keeping everybody at bay, and you're not going to be able to connect with anybody or you know have that feeling of belonging or anything because you're always looking for. I mean, I, I think you're just always looking for the negative part. Like, there's there's nothing good there. Yeah, we're we've already got them on the on the defense before we even start to build connection. It's our, they got to earn it. Nick Fitch, what's your opinion? What the heck is trust? And do we earn it? Do we give it? How do, how does it work? What do you think trust is? So I know how I am with trust. I have so much that I put front forward. Like can, I just can I can I trust you to get that guy to stop hitting the horn? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I am outside working, so. Um, basically, um, long short of it is I give so much forward and in return, I'm hoping that they give equivalent or not. It's not up to me for them to do that. But what I do in turn then is the more they show that I can trust them, the more I get. Now, if they hurt me, damn it, of course, uh, the if they hurt me during this process, I recoil back. I put up my arm and be like, yo, hold up. What happened here? But like the initial is like the gut of, hey, like Perry, like, man, I trust you. I think you're wise in ways that I am not. Rick, you're wise in ways that I'm not. I'm going to trust these parts of myself to you. And... I am not going to hold back on those parts. And then over time, once I get to know you a little more and everything, and the, I, all my friends are like this, and this is how I learned it, was over time and just being around each other and joking and kidding around, we very much learned to trust each other with everything. But we all put forward that like initial like, hey, bud, how you doing? How you doing? And then we talk about something in common and then we build it from there i think trust is a two-way street in a lot of cases and a lot of people don't want to accept that within themselves so let me try and simplify that down a little bit you say trust is given first and then over time you measure trust by connection or relationship dynamic getting deeper like what do you mean by that um like my gut reaction says okay this is someone i can trust and over time i may tell them deeper and deeper parts of myself so your i don't measure, it's like, measurement it's system built. is your gut yeah it's built a little bit like yeah but built on like you, the measurement is your your judgment from like your intuition or your instinct. Your gut says this is good or this is bad. That's like you're yeah. going off of instinct at that point. Yeah, because you can trust whoever you want to, and you know I'm not judging anybody that goes out there and just trusts willy nilly. But at some point you have to like learn your gut. Like mm, I don't like this guy. <laughs> like nothing offense to him, but my gut's saying stay away. Okay, cool. So we have to measure, like if I were to say, okay, guys, here's how trust works. You measure it by what your gut says and listen to your stomach. And that'll tell you that trust is going well or not well. Also, it'll tell you when you're hungry. So that's good too. It's like got a lot of jobs. Is that, is that helping? It's, I guess I'm using the wrong words here. This is why it's so um, tricky as we're trying to explain such a complicated thing. <laughs> but essentially what I'm, what I mean by gut is my pure instinct. Follow our like instincts. Our Let's be real. Has anybody ever followed their instincts and ended up in a shit show? Listen, half the time my instinct is in my pants. <laughs> that shit gets you in yeah. trouble all the time yeah but at the same time if they hurt you that was my decision to let them in 
I'm, I'm just saying sometimes my instinct creates the problems. And so on one hand, while it's my measurement for judgment of trust and loyalty and good feelings, good vibes, all that stuff. On the other hand, it's also like showing. And so that's a problem too. <laughs> True enough. Fair enough. So I I can I'll add to the the building of it. So I mean, we can with the trust. Like, I mean, if you look at this group, we commit to it, and if we we open up and we trust right off the rip, we give the benefit of the doubt and we trust. Increasingly, our trust will grow, seeing that nobody is fucking us over. Nobody's you know taking a taking a jab. Nobody is betraying us. Nobody is judging us. Nobody is blaming or shaming us. Nobody stabbing us in the back with the shit that we're putting out there to each other. That's how the trust is. That's how the trust grows to be something stronger. That's where you quote unquote earn more of it. That I mean, you no, don't. I, you know, as long as you didn't, you're not you know hurting each other, then it's it's just gonna grow, and you can prove to each other by not spreading you know bullshit or not like stabbing each other. Like I'm saying, you know, that's how it's gonna grow, but. The initial part of it is you have to give it. Let me uh let me simplify that one for you. Because I was gonna say like two parts here that one people have to earn trust. That person or individual already has a list of tests you have to try to go through to try to earn their trust. They don't know what those tests are, but when they come about, it's a test. The second thing is what Ryan was saying, development. Trust is developed over time. And with the over time, you get to know each other. You start trusting more and more and more between each other to where it's just a normal thing now within whatever community or whatever person you develop that trust with. Okay, so you said more over time, and the more information you have with somebody, the more that you're able to trust. But what is, yeah. have you ever had a thing where like you spend more time with somebody and you like them less? That could happen. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. then it wouldn't just be measured on just time then, because it's a different factor. There's a different measurement here that makes it go like, well, if I spend more time with that person, that person does shady shit. So it's not just right. time with them because I watch behavior. So what behavior am I measuring to go? I trust or don't trust. There's something else that I'm using here to say, I will give you more trust or I will give you less. There's some sort of a system here for how much is given. So I'll, let's just go with, cause it seems a lot more like it does seem given more than earned. It, let's just see, like, agree or disagree. Does somebody say it's more earned than given? Chris Miller, I we're talking about that. trust today. Anybody say that it's more earned than given? See, seems like everyone's like, yeah. it seems more given than earned, right? Diane, cool. what do you see? I see, like, uh, I broke up with my wife because of my past relationships, so I took it out on her and I trust her because Oh, she's gonna screw me over, so I can't trust her because this other person screwed me over. So it's hard for me to trust people in general because you get screwed over. Okay, so because you know somebody else was mean to me, you're gonna be mean to me. More or less, yeah. It's not good. To that's like that. all right. So that's like saying like uh, I grew up with people before, and so since one of the people that I went to high school with, they're a dick. And so because that person makes the choices to be a dick, you're from my past too. You're a dick. Does that make sense? No. So that's a good subject for me because it's, it's really hard for me to freaking trust. Like, because so many people burn bridges with me and I just feel like I'm going to get kind of like a paranoia a little bit because I'm like, oh, we can screw me over and. Then you take it out on somebody else because you got screwed over and you don't want to do that. You don't want to react that way to somebody else. Yeah. No, let, let's look at it. Let's see how that's, because this is a, a coping mechanism. This is a survival instinct. This is a, how do I manage these situations? Uh, and this is where we'll have to look into that a little bit more in a second here. But first let's get into like, okay, trust if I give it, 
other people that I've given it to have misused it. So if I give trust, my association is with pain. If I trust you, you will hurt me. But there is no conversation in our heads going, how did I vet this? How did I say this person, like Nick was like, in my gut, I can trust you. How are we even measuring how much we can trust or what the heck trust even is before we completely remove it and just create assumptions that because I don't let you, you know, Tommy, because Tommy betrayed me, Donald will betray me. Like, why would that system make sense? We're like, no, Tommy fucks shit up, but Donald's pretty solid. You're like, yeah, but Tommy did shitty things. So that means Donald will do shitty things. It's like, those are different dudes. <laughs> That's not the same guy. So what am I protecting myself against if I make up that you're something different than you are so I can stay safe? What am I doing? It feels situational, Rick. It feels like the trust is a kind of a control thing. Like, you know, if you like if you're just meeting someone at a festival in a field and you're dancing around and you're talking about stuff, cool, you trust them, cool. Okay. Now that same person is in your business. Okay, your trust. Now the same person is in your family or it's like what's at risk is basically like how you engage with trust. You know, I feel like it's what's at risk and it's also like I, I'm confused because trust seems so important, but it seems almost taboo to talk about from the start. Unless I'm over in the Bay Area with some people like, hey, brother, I trust you. I feel safe. If I start talking like that, people could be like, what the fuck? I really got to lay the groundwork. So it really feels situational and it feels like a control thing, which puts us into another realm of being human for me. Well, so I'm like, if, I'm still confused. <laughs> if we use If we use the word safe for trust it's going to create a different level of power dynamic. It means I give so much power to others that I have to rely on them to give me safety. And I don't require that. Like, so that's something where I would go a different direction with it is I don't require somebody else to make me feel safe so I can trust. And so this is where it's a, a different thing. This is where I'm like, let's, we have to challenge each one of these things. I've got safety, loyalty, accountability, commitment, hope, connection, control, I've got all these different factors that seem to be a part of it. It's like, what else, what, what am I missing here to go? Like, how do we do this? I want to hear Chris Miller, but then I got a couple of questions that we really have to kind of answer so we can go like, this is how it works. So Chris, we're going into what is trust? How do we get it? I think we've already debunked a little bit that it's earned that, that like, trust is earned. We're like, we have no idea what the fuck that means, but we can give it. So what do you think trust is? I think there's multiple levels to trust. <clears throat> I feel like innately we automatically allow for a certain amount of trust for anybody that we meet. And, but then it's their actions that prove to us their level of trustworthiness. So I, I feel like we innately give trust to anybody that we automatically come across. We don't require them to earn it, but to get to like tier two or tier three, where we're talking more deep or we're sharing more or we're, running businesses together, whatever the scenario may be, that requires a higher degree of trust that, you know, actions have to show that you have, you deserve that amount of trust from me. So it's measured by action over time. I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like if we're, if we're talking anything above a basic level of trust, which that could be something as simple as I'm walking down the sidewalk and see somebody else walking down, I say hi and I trust them not to shank me, you know, I mean, just basic level of trust. I trust that, you know, this person is going to be, you know, they're going to be ha not necessarily happy, I guess, but cordial in, in that environment. You know, I trust somebody to make a sandwich without screwing it up if I'm paying them money to do so, or, you know, just basic bare bones trust levels, but anything required than that, I feel like it, it requires, some kind of an action to show that it's it's deserved. Just like if you're working at a job and you want a raise, you don't get that raise without showing that you're worth the extra money they're going to put into you. All right, so we measure by actions over time, and then we have a different tier system. Basic system is, like the basics is, you're not gonna attack me and you'll at least do your job with competency. Like, you'll make a sandwich without taking a turd and putting it in. 
Like we're not gonna just <laughs> like we're not gonna do dumb things here. We're not gonna spit in everybody's food or something crazy. Like I trust you're not gonna do dumb things here, right? That's basic. Yeah. What, what would the next tier be? What do you say? Like next tier for trust would look like this. I would consider that like what you could just call first name basis. You know, just like with me going to these different shops right now to evaluate damage on cars, you know, every one of them right now has a basic level of trust, maybe a little bit higher because it's a specialized field. And so I know that they've done the work to be knowledgeable in that field. But then there's one after that, that I would consider like first name basis as far as I go in and talk to the shop and we kind of, you know, sit there and have talks with each other, ask, you know, Hey, how's, how's the family going? You know, how's everything going? Blah, blah, blah. Before we get into anything that is work related. Yeah. I would kind of consider that the next tier where you're able to talk more, more about your individual life experiences for, and, you know, trusting them not to, I guess, essentially like put you on blast for it or, you know, reciprocate the same amount that you're putting into them. What would tier four look like? Tier four would be more like, I, I would almost reserve tier four for, you know, all of us in this group, because that's where I feel like you start getting into the higher tiers like that. And that's where you can, you're, you feel comfortable enough to share your vulnerability with people and ask for help or advice in certain situations and vice versa. You feel comfortable giving that advice to somebody being vulnerable with you. I mean, it's kind of a, a large leap from what, you know, I guess in this scenario, we're considering tier three to tier four, but there's not really any kind of an in-between I feel. It's almost like going from, it's almost like going from an acquaintance to a solid friendship. There's not really an in-between in my mind. So would there be like a tier five where there's like, there's like full surrender. I give you full open, all trust, everything from my mind, soul, body, resources, everything. Would that be like the level we're trying to get our relationship dynamic in? Yeah, I, I would say that that's a fairly secluded level that maybe only a handful of people can ever really get into. And I don't, I feel like, like, I feel biologically or emotionally, we can only handle so many people in that group. So if one person eventually like falls out of that group, then there's room for somebody else. Like it's a very selective tier where maybe you can only have three people in it per se, because that's all that you can really handle having that deep of a connection with. At what level do you think that love can be like used at that level? At what level can love be a part of trust? Probably when you start hitting in between tier three and four per se, when, when you kind of go from more of the acquaintance or basic friendship or so, where you start feeling more comfortable, you know, sharing deeper thoughts, deeper connections. And it it's not just like a light switch type thing. It's more, you know, you have tier three and then like level A, B, C, D, whatever, before you hit that tier four, because there's stepping stones to, to get there per se. So, I mean, it, it kind of comes out into a, like a long formal outline almost, you could say, as far as the way that I would consider trust, just because I see a lot of different levels to that. Um, but me seeing things like that could just potentially be guarding myself from untrustful people as well. And maybe that's just the way that I view the whole relationship. Could be. At least we got a system to operate on or at least something we can work with here. So I've got a five a five stage system that may have stages in between each stages here too. So I got the basics here. Being cordial, don't attack me, just do your basic stuff. Like I can just trust you're gonna do your job without screwing that up. Next is like first name basis. Uh, these are the people you'll see. You can talk about the weather, talk about did you see that thing on the news, you talk about uh, hey, check out this video, like just basics. Tier three is more than the weather. That's going to be like family and deeper conversations and sharing a lot more stuff that's actually like, this is my kids, these are my life, this is where I'm at, this is what I do. Like it gets into you stuff. That's where the, the importance level starts to evolve beyond just acquaintance into friendship or love starts to begin there. Your importance goes up in that category. In there, there's probably subsections. Well, let's go right to tier four. That's your inner circle. These are the people you can be vulnerable with. You'll ask for help and you feel, and this is where Richard was using the word safe. I have the word, like there's a lot more 
safety in this circle. I can trust that this circle is going to be not a betrayed circle. You guys. Yeah, I would consider tier four like brotherhood status. So tier four, this is the brotherhood and tier five. That's where it would be like full commit, full love, full openness, full like I give you everything. You ever need it, I'll be there. You know, and this comes from resources, my opinions, my, you know, thoughts, my body, my soul, anything needed. I got you, bro. I'm in. And we try to put this, and this is like you said, this is such a, such a high level of surrender that there's not a lot of space. There's not a lot of spots on that. <laughs> we can't just throw that one around because there's also that level of the, the more trust we give, it seems like the more damage they can do when it's betrayed. Yeah, I think that's why we tend to, whenever we're in a relationship with somebody and they get to that level and that relationship ends, it takes us so long to open the position back up for somebody else. Like, it, you know, you, you have to really kind of, you know, really consider exactly what all happened, you know, what can I do to prevent it next time? And, you know, just kind of lean on everybody else to, to realize almost like there's room in here for somebody else now, because I've made peace with it. And I've kind of vetted the position to know, yes, this does take three people versus two, for example, you know, it's not a, a, pay or a job that's being paid to somebody for no reason. It's still efficient with three people. Fair enough. All right. That's hey. that at least gives us something to work with here. So it looks like there's different methods or different systems that we can use. Some seem abstract. Uh, Chris has a step-by-step, which at least gives you like, Hey, this is the levels that I operate in. So I know which category people are in. Um, We've got different criteria to measure it off, whether it be action over time, or I just give open trust. And if you ever show me any reason not to, then I adjust the boundary level uh, with you. It seems like uh, there's a few things here for that. So um, let's start off right at the beginning then. How much do we leave ourselves open to damage if the more trust we give, the more propensity for damage we're able to open ourselves up to? So how much trust do I give off the rip when the, I know the more trust I give, the more damage can be done. How do I know? How do I know what that is? That's subjective for each individual person because each person's ex- life experience is going to dictate that. How bad have I been hurt in the past? What has hurt me in the past? It, was it a very close person that hurt me in the past or was it someone that I barely knew that hurt me in the past? So that's going to, each individual, individual person's got to look at that and say, you know, kind of make their own like checks and balance list of what can I, what can I say that's not going to hurt me? They also got to see like, um, how strong is my armor? Now, if I say these things, can I deflect that? Am I going to be, am I going to be, you know, completely heartbroken and destroyed by telling them this secret. And if they betray me on it, you know, that's, that's everybody's individual kind of, you know, thing that they have to process on their, their own. I don't think that's a, that's not a one size fits all. It's still, I still see that as a strategy though. And it, maybe it, tell me if I'm, I'm saying this the right way or not, I'll give you trust but I also have to trust my armor to be adaptable, to be able to handle whatever bad things could happen. I have to be able to adapt or handle whatever it is. So if a betrayal happens, you're like, okay, that person has now revealed how much I would tier, I guess, if you look at Chris's system, they've shown what tier they're allowed. And that person, if I give them more access to the parts of me that are more personal, more intimate, more, you know, the, the deeper parts of me, that person's reckless. So they got moved back to tier one. Tier right. yeah, and that goes like with, for each tier. That goes yeah, with like knowing yourself. Yeah, that goes with knowing yourself and, and, you know, you being authentically you and knowing what you can handle, how you can handle it. And that, that gives you the ability to um, – see how much you're going to give to each individual person that you encounter. If I know that I can handle giving, 
somebody my deepest darkest secret and then knowing that like okay if they turn around and betray me on that i'm still going to be okay then then you can have a higher level of trust with more people but if you're going to think like oh well if i if i give them like this little tiny secret and they use it against me i'm going to be fucking demolished well that's just knowing yourself and how you how you're going to operate so i mean that's that's you know digging deep into yourself and finding out how strong your armor is and and knowing like what are the things that i can tell people that aren't going to crush me I kind of view that as the difference between internal and external armor. You know, internal armor is something that you would equate to knowing yourself, knowing how you handle things. If something goes wrong, how you're going to emotionally deal with it. I don't think that's something that we ever really take off. You know, I feel like that's something that is innately just always, always on because we're always working to improve ourselves. But as far as like external armor, you know, like if we're talking like with the tiered system that I tend to view trust as. You know, you think about it as like a percentage almost. So at base level, you have all your armor on, and for each individual tier, you take off 25% of your armor, you know, or whatever that may end up equating to. But you still always got your internal armor. So when somebody's at that top tier where you're really fully open and trusting everything they say, you know, it's not that you're protected, but you're you're aware and able to handle emotionally putting somebody in that tier in the first place. I, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's exactly what it is. You're just, you know, you're, you're confident within yourself to know that you can handle what you can handle and what you can't. I feel like that's, that's a good, that's a spot that I've also found on this one too. I would probably say when I meet people, I'm, I leave open access all the way up into tier three, like for everybody, because anything under tier three, if they do a full betrayal at tier three and under, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like uh, the other ones would be a little bit more like the boundaries will have to change completely. But from, t- from I'm, I'm trying to use Chris's tier system because it does give us at least a, a baseline. So that's useful. And each person's baselines and stuff will be different. I think it's still useful to go like, I guess there is levels to this because you can't just go up to somebody like you said, Ryan, and just go like, hi, my name's Ryan. This is my deepest, darkest secret. Like you don't do, we don't do that because there's too many people that would go, I'm telling everyone (laughs) I like attention and that will get me attention. Like, and so we have to watch out for those types of behaviors, in which case um, it does seem like for me, if there's a five tier system, basic, and then first name basis, then getting into personal stuff, a little more than the weather inner circle, and then full surrender, full love. Um, I'd start off right at tier three for me. I'm like, you can, I'll, Hey, I'll give you some inside stuff. I'll tell you some real things. I'll open up to you. I'll share with you, but I'm not going to give you like deepest, darkest secret. And you're not in my inner circle, you know, until you put in that. And that's why I said the, the measurement of action over time. So I think it's a combination of Chris's answer and Ty's answer of time mixed in with action. And then how I measure like, hey, you seem to start falling into all these other judgments that I have, which is, are you safe? Are you loyal? Are you accountable? Do you, can I commit to you and you commit to me? Can I hope that you're not going to betray me? Do we have a connection? Is there a level of control for what tier I have you in to know that I can move you up or down? It seems like there's some sort of complicated internal made up system. Remember, this is very important. Everything I'm measuring on right now the measurement is made up, you know, and that's why Nick was like, it's my gut. It's my instinct. We make up this system. How much can I give of an emotion with no actual measurement? Well, we make it up. It's a belief that we make. I can trust you. How do you know? I just made it up. <laughs> I just chose to do it. And based on a longer period of time that we don't have damage done to each other, the more I can give. So it does seem like I'm with Ryan and I'm with all all you guys on this one where I, I give trust first. And if there's a betrayal and something goes wrong, 
well, that's not going to be the worst thing I've ever gone through. So, okay. But it also, this is where I'm, I'm with Ryan, it does let me know what boundaries and which armor type do I have to have for you. I have to make sure that I'm, like, I know that you are a betrayer. Or I know that you're reckless with information. Or I know that you love attention, and if I give you any juicy information, you're going to be using that for your own benefit instead, at any cost to me. You don't care. So now I know that I don't give you juicy information, but I'll share a funny video with you. We can talk about, looks like it's raining today. Yeah, definitely is. I'm like, make sure you bundle up. And if you think about it, if you don't give right away, look at all the people that you're missing out on. Because you're not giving anybody the fucking chance to to know who you are. And you're not giving yourself a chance to know who anybody else is. And that's that's where, you know, people start to feel fucking lonely and isolated. Because you're in your own prison at that point. You've created it. And it's like, well, if you don't let anybody in, I mean... I don't lower my full shield to a lot of people, but I am looking over my shield. I'm putting it at like, you know, waist high and being like, Hey, how you doing? Remember like Ty, remember what we were saying about like opening up your heart a little bit. It's the same thing with the trust issue. It's like, Hey, we got to look through it and and be like, all right, I trust you enough right now. You're not getting everything, but I'm going to trust you not to fuck me over right now. And then you learn them from there. You gradually go through exactly what you know we're saying, those levels. But if you don't do it first, you're missing everybody you come in contact with. And that's a lonely fucking place. And uh, I think we all watch the character of the person who we let in our lives and start, you know, and trust and and watch them how they treat other people as well just um just by the basic of their their actions and how they really treat people with their trust as well I will yeah, so, somebody has to be comfortable enough with you wanting to proceed like like somebody wanting to immediately jump to tier four or five that's kind of a red flag like they have to be comfortable with with it taking time and building the relationship. And if they're not, then that kind of tells you where it is that they're at and what's going to be able to be accomplished with them. So you kind of have your answer. there. Yeah. So then we also have to take an account, not just our trust system, but another person's trust system too. Yeah. That, I, that's what, sorry. Go ahead. Well, now it gets complicated uh, because well, that's they what I was even gonna know say. what it is. About the opening is like to see, because I think I get that from a lot of people because I'm really open with the person at the grocery store. My trust level is okay there because I'm safe. So I open in depth and I connect with them. And some people love it. And some people look at me like what, just the way you explained a minute ago is like, what's up with this guy? How come he's so trusting? He's on tier four, you know, and it really depends on what the other, so it's not always the case that that person is like, should maybe you should pay attention, but that person may not have negative flow. They just might be unique or different, you know, and from a neurodiverse point of view, yeah, sometimes it's it to get to level four first and then work through two or three. And maybe if you're telling me something that's not working, you know? So uh, I think there's two sides of that for me to look at your experience with, Hey, somebody's in four, what the hell are you doing here? And then for me being like, hey, I'm in four. What you doing? You know, um, so perspective. Yeah, it actually does make a lot of sense when you say it like that too, Richard. We're like if uh, it's almost like if somebody like Ryan said, if I open up and the first thing I do like, hey, we're in line. And you're like, hey, man, listen, let me tell you about this cancer thing that I've been fighting through. And let me tell you, my mom just passed away. And I want to tell you about the emotions that I had with that. And they're like, I don't have a connection to you. I don't, I don't know you enough to care. And if somebody's just pouring their stuff out, it goes from like, wow, we really connected to like, what the fuck was that? You know, cause we would go like somebody just, just poured all of their drama out on me. I don't have any reason that I would even invest in that person because it does seem like there's a level of, Hey, you, 
you are on a higher tier. We've gone through enough stuff that I actually do want to hear. And I think this is where I was asking, where does love or importance or the status change start to happen? If you jump right past tier three, where they, they start going like, hey, wait a second. I want to invest in you. Well, then you're going to start, it's going to disrupt the, the system, isn't it? What do you see, Nick? Um, so I, I kind of want to talk about the flip side of the whole scenario too, because I've had this happen to me and probably everyone else has there. You get to like the final stage, you trust this person with your heart, everything. And then they betray you in such a way that they become tier zero. You will never trust that human being again. And that's the boundary system. Now I got a boundary. Yep. This is why when Ryan's talking about armor, that's the armor we're talking mm -hmm. about is like, ah, I know that you are a person who requires full protection. You mm -hmm. cannot be given information. You're reckless with it. And if that's the case, this is why, like, this is where, like, we have to operate as ourselves. This is where know thyself becomes important. I don't have to change anything about me because somebody else is the way they are. I just change the boundary that I have for that person to go like, I don't give you as much simply because you can't handle that without trying to hurt. That's okay. I just don't give you any ammo then. You can have all the guns you want. I'm just not giving you ammunition. And they're like, well, I don't think that's very fair. I think you should give me ammo so I can shoot my guns. They're like, go get ammo from somebody else. I just won't. I noticed that if I give you a bullet, you shoot me with it. And I'm not going to give you bullets then. <laughs> I don't have to give you bullets. I don't have to do that. <laughs> There's no thing. And I think that's one of the things that we can go, I don't have to give you bullets. And then you're going to watch whatever system comes in. And we've been talking a lot the last couple of days about uh, the coping mechanisms. I think that's really been on my mind a lot. And it gets into like, how do you handle it then? What are we doing? And we get into the different, the different parts that I've broken it down to into warrior talk. where like, I don't want to deal with this shit. I don't want to fucking deal with it. And that's the retreat or hide. That's denial. You know, bargaining is negotiation and compromise, you know, over explaining. I'm going to try and talk my way out of this one. I don't want to deal with it. What do I have to do for peace here? How much of myself do I have to surrender myself to or compromise so that we can just have peace again? And we start sacrificing parts of ourselves to try to make it so we can survive in this untrustworthy dynamic. What's the one that we usually go to, guys? Attack. Anger. We get angry. I'm going to get mad. I don't need to defend myself for somebody untrustworthy if they're dead. If I take them out first, I don't need to protect myself. So anger makes perfect sense. The problem is, is we don't want to be alone and that leaves you completely alone. So womp womp. Depression is surrender. I give up. I give up. I'm not even fighting anymore. There's nothing. I got no more fight left. I give up. I surrender. We start getting into sadness. Like, what is there to fight about? I got nothing. Now, I mentioned this yesterday, and I talked to Richard about it earlier today. Like, these systems for coping, the way that we learn to deal with trust and betrayal and loyalty falling apart and people who I can't, I can't open up to, and they, they just knock themselves down to zero from tier three, which this is kind of a fun tier system, Chris. I'm actually, I think it's kind of cool. Like, so it makes it easier to kind of explain the levels on this one, which may help people figure out their own authentic level system or how they figure this out. So it's kind of a cool baseline. But they knock themselves down to zero, like Nick Fitch just said. They knock them down to zero. Well, what is the way that we handle that? Do we get mad and yell? Do we try to over explain and try and talk our way out of it? Do we just run and hide? You know, are we like, I'm not going to deal with this shit. I'm out of here. You know, are we surrendering and going like, whatever you want to do, I don't care, whatever, do whatever, you, you know what, not even worth fighting. Like, what are we doing in these situations? These coping mechanisms are there for situations that we don't know how to control or don't have control over. This is there because I don't, I don't have options here, but let's go ahead and really look at the difference. 
when we are in a situation where we don't have control, the easy example is like you got put in jail or prison. We brought this up because it's a very extreme, but it's obviously like I can see it. If you're in jail, you don't have options to not be in jail. You're in jail. So now I have to cope with this. I, this situation is what it is, and I have to deal with this situation. Well, a lot of times we put ourselves in relationships that feel like that. I'm married or I'm in this dynamic, we live together, and we feel like I don't have options. I don't have control. Well, when was that situation built? When was this coping mechanism built? Well, when we were little kids, we also did not have control. When we were little kids, we needed to learn how to survive situations where I'm nine years old, I can't go get a job. I'm nine years old, I can't just go buy my own house and get the fuck out of here right now. I have to deal with whatever situations I have and I don't have options, so I learn how to cope. And we're most likely gonna run into retreat, negotiation, attack, or surrender, or something underneath one of those umbrellas. You know, and so then we start getting into, you know, and just so you're wondering, like the, the drinking or denial, that part, that's all under denial when it gets into the distractions and addiction and stuff like that. So these things are all covered, it's all in here. It's going to fall under one of these categories that we use. But if we think about it, how old were we when we developed this safety mechanism? You know, anger and attack, well, that's temper tantrum. You know, retreat, run, hide. That's going to be like, I'm going to go hide in the closet or I'm going to go close the door in my room. I don't want to talk about it. You know, bargaining, please just listen to me. I just want to talk. Just please don't get me in trouble. I don't want to talk. I just want, please, 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 please. Like you're trying to talk your way out of it. Surrender, we're like, just start crying. Just fall apart. Fucking, I got nothing. And just fall apart. Well, we started doing that when we were children. And now, whenever we're in a situation that feels like I can't trust you, I'm out of control here, I don't have any options, we revert back to our system we built when we were children. We become our little kid self again. We never evolved into a more advanced system, which is why we talk about our armor type and leveling up your armor. You don't have to use your eight-year-old armor anymore. Now we can get nanotech and use it appropriately. This person I can trust at tier one. This person I can trust at tier four. This person I, can, I have to keep my guard up on. This person I can let my armor completely off and I know that they're not gonna do any harm. This is where we become adaptive and we're able to say, I can trust openly. And if you do do harm, I can block that pretty quick, I'm pretty well trained. And if you do try and do harm, it's not that I'm damaged. It's just, I know I can't I have to have a boundary or a different system with you to make sure that I don't take more damage, but I do not have to compromise myself. I do not have to be inauthentic. I do not have to be fake. I do not have to wear a mask. I do not have to do anything different other than go, I don't give you as much because you're just going to do harm with it. That's okay. I accept where you're at. This doesn't mean I have to be different than who I am. I just don't have to open up all of my deepest, darkest secrets or share my personal stuff with you because you're not worthy and that's okay. It's okay. I'm not mad at them. That's where they're at. They're doing their best. Right, Luke? They're just doing the best they can. That's all they got. That's their best. Yeah, they don't know any better. They got nothing. They got nothing, and that's okay. I accept. That's their best. And so I don't have to be mad. In fact, if I use any of my defenses, my retreat, my negotiation, my attack, or my surrender, if I use any of those on somebody who is doing their best, that's my bad. That's me. Listen, I got to learn how to deal with my own stuff here. And if I'm having a freak out or I'm having a temper tantrum or I'm over explaining or I'm running and hiding in the closet or I just start crying all over myself, that's me not being able to deal. My armor needs to be upgraded. And so what the fuck is trust? Trust is if you really break this down, guys, trust is a judgment, just like respect. I'm judging you. I'm judging you whether you are worthy of being able to let my armor down or not. It's a judgment. And we try not to use judgments, but it's actually an assessment that we use based on all these different factors, the past, 
the pain that we've gone through, how love and betrayal and all these things have happened, not just to us, but for us. So I can create an advanced system of being able to find a way to connect safely. It is an assessment. And it's an ever-changing judgment system because the more information you have, the more advanced are the different factors you're going to use with it. And how can you tell if your system is effective or not effective? Did you go into retreat, negotiation, attack, or surrender? Because if you did, your armor needs an upgrade. And that's how you can tell. This is how we can measure for ourselves. Are we effective at this tool that we're using to measure other people? And if the answer is, nope, I go full attack on them, well, then your armor is not very good. Oh, no, I'm, I go into over-explaining. I'm like, then your armor needs to be upgraded because it seems like that's not necessary for what your goals are. I just, I duck out. I run and hide. I just avoid the whole thing completely. Well, then you're not prepared. You need to get a better system so that way you can handle what it is without having to feel like you're all fucked up. I need to run. I can't deal with this. You can, it's a conversation. I surrender. I just cry. I don't have control over that system of myself. I just, I just fall right a fucking part and I got nothing. Well, it looks like there's a spot there that we can go ahead and patch up that hole in the armor there and make it so that it's useful and not a crutch. You don't fall apart. You can have a conversation to understand. I feel like a big part of that is trial by fire. Correct. Because, I mean, you don't know that you have holes in your armor until you you feel that puncture wound. And that's, I mean, it's a shitty part about it, but it's, I mean, that's just life. And the thing is that we have to be strong enough and aware enough to know, hey, that hurt now i need to i know that's where my little hole is i have to patch it and then it's not going to happen again we learn more from the battlefield than we do from the books and like you said this is trial by fire you go in it's one thing to read about combat it's another thing to survive or going through it you know talking about like well here's how trust should work you're like Have you ever been betrayed before? Well, no, but I read all about it. Listen, until you've got some betrayals under your belt, you're not really going to understand what it feels like. It's kind of like if I read a book on martial arts, you know, or I read a book on boxing, or I read a book on any any combat style at all, anything, and go like, well, in theory, I would block like this, and then I would do this, and then I'd be like, pop, 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 and then I would be like this, and then I'd grab him by the arm, and then I would do this. And they're like, you've never been punched in the face before, have you? All of the, all your plans go out the fucking window as soon as you get punched in the face, dude. That's a Mike Tyson quote. Everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. <laughs> Everyone's this. If you've never had that experience before, that's a really great theory. Let me know after you get punched in the face how that works. Yeah, shit don't work textbook. Sure doesn't. You're like you're bleeding out of your face. You're like, let me check. I can check a chapter two. What the fuck was that? Hold, stop hitting me. <laughs> Something's not right. It didn't do what it... <laughs> you're some, it says you're supposed to fall down. You didn't, oh. <laughs> plan A is to revert to plan B. <laughs> plan A is fucking... Plan A didn't work. Chris Miller, what do you see? So, would that... Would seem that a lot of that depend also on who that was happening with and where what their level was at? I mean, Absolutely. if it's somebody like in that example where you say, oh, well, I, I read all about it, but I've never actually done it myself, you kind of already know that negotiation isn't going to work because they're going to stick to what it is that they read. So realistically, your best option is, you know, to just ditch and leave. And I don't feel like that's, you know, any kind of negative outcome towards yourself. But Maybe. vice versa, it might be somebody that, you know, you feel like deserves an explanation as far as what's going on. So ghosting and running is a negative outcome in that scenario on yourself. So I, I feel like it's kind of situational as far as how the best way to respond would be. Yeah. I, one thing I enjoy with this tier system that you have here is it does give you an adjustment level for your armor. And so just because somebody isn't proficient doesn't mean we have to deal in absolutes. And that's why I enjoy your system is it's not absolutes. It's not only all in, all out. 
Like, and so this is where my armor can be strong enough and my understanding of myself and my strength and my confidence and my, my ability to handle situations. Well, that's high enough that I can accept that your armor is not very good or your system has flaws. And then like, you know, we choose how much do we commit because we have to then show people, well, let's do a controlled test and see how good your armor works. Maybe you're right. In which case it's kind of like uh, sparring instead of throwing somebody into, you know, a, a crazy hardcore to the death match, you know, like it's a very different thing. And so go like, all right, let's put the gloves on, put the headgear on. Let's see how your armor holds up. And you're like, okay, I'm ready for anything. And you just like, boom, like, oh, oh. And like, how'd your armor work out there? That was with gloves on and with like the headgear and you got the mouthpiece. Like this is controlled damage. How'd you do? And they're like, that did not go according to plan. You're like, maybe we adjust this a little bit because if you were in a pit fight, it's bare knuckle or brass knuckles. You don't want to take one of those without any of the gear we got. So let's go ahead and adjust how we uh, uh, move around these hits that life is going to hit you with. Let's go ahead and change it. Now that's the commitment part that I think Angel brought up at the beginning is, do I want to commit myself to sparring with this person to get them as proficient as I can to trust them? Do I want to put in the time? And some people are worth the time. And some people are not worth the time. And that's the part where the, you take all of these factors and go, I think I'm going to keep you a tier one until you can level up on your own. You know, I think I'm going to keep you at, at, you know, tier two. We'll talk about the weather. We'll talk about bullshit. But I'm not going to take you to tier three and start making you valuable in my life because you, you seem like you're not even working on your own things, let alone me being able to trust you with mine. What do you see, Richard? Okay, well, well, I, I see trust is, um, you know, Rich, sorry. I, I hear what you're saying and I do, and I get that. And I come from a point of like, I'm sitting on like bare land right now. First one thing that I saw is that like trust is like, it's almost like you have to like build blueprints. You know, you can't just like wing it almost, you know, unless you come from a solid, solid background or something, maybe you can wing it. But it seems like trust is to be trusted to trust is like a human need. So here you are, you know, like just in our situation, Rick, let's use this. You know, I come to you, you've got your foundations, you've got your human needs. And I'm like, don't, you know, and I want you to trust me because I want to be in community, you know. And so I'm like desperate for that, which kind of kills it, you know, in a way, because you're desperate, you're not going to get it. So there's like a valid like, hey, Rick, can you just trust me so I can feel good so then we can do this thing together because I really need it. So there's like this it's valid to need it to like operate on a certain level. Like if you're in love with somebody and you're in a relationship, there must be trust or something. So, you know, it's it. It just seems like a human need and it also seems like it's necessary. So it's like, it's really just like, it's a great to see this, but I'm still perplexed and standing in the middle of the land going like, how the hell are we going to get this trust house built? You know, human needs are such an interesting thing. So like, you're right. Trust is a need. It's a need for all dynamics. You know what else is a need? Food. Food is a need. We need that. Do we all like the same food? We all have different likes. We all have different things. Some people love you know, steak. Some people love salad. Like everyone's got a different thing that that's what I love the best. Some people don't eat red meat and some people only eat red meat. Like that's still food. So what's, what's the correct answer? You know, people would argue, well, this is better than others. Well, this is the best thing. Well, that's the right way. I think you should be vegan. I think you should be paleo. I think you should be carnivore. I think you should go lion diet. I think you should do, everyone's got an opinion. It's all food though. And food's a need. So what works best for one person doesn't work best for another person. Same thing with trust. Trust may be a basic need. But Could Chris's it. tier system versus somebody's reckless emotional system, well, those would have two different measurements. How do we, and this is the important part, how do we make sure that we are able to like be okay even if somebody does reckless things? Oh, I know, I know. 
<laughs> we're going from the tier system to the video game system now. Oh, Step love, one is know your that. character, man. If you're a if you're a mage, you don't give a shit about strength points. You care more about willpower and such. If you're a warrior, fuck all the magic shit. Give me the defense and give me the strength to carry two fucking swords in one hand. You know. So you got to know your character before you know how to apply the skill points to level up. I think that's that works really well for anybody who's ever gone in a gaming route. Is like what's most important to you. And like Richard, this would probably be a good good thing for like even just to use your example. Dude, you're a mage, bro. And you're like, dude, it's definitely intelligence, it's definitely willpower, it's definitely make sure you got enough mana or spell power or magic energy, and that's the way that it works. And I'm like, dude, I'm a barbarian. I don't use any of that shit. Strength, fortitude, skills. That's where it's at. You're like, yeah, but I think that really, though, we should really be focusing on the magic aspect of things. I'm like, I don't use magic. I use smash, smash. Let's focus on some smashing. He's like, yeah, I think there's a little more finesse to this, though. You know, and it's like, mm, so far I've had I've got a high experience here and I'm a high level character with smashy smash and I really fucking love it. Also, it's a lot. It's very satisfying to me. I'm a smash. You're like, yeah, I found that like I can do like lightning and that feels really good and uh, like fireball that's pretty cool too <laughs> so let's see cast iron and using frying pan and using a frying pan yeah <laughs> yeah it's funny man and so uh this is where it's i think it's a good example of understanding yourself and that's why you know if you take all the advice that all the guys have put in here and you take these pieces and consider all of them together it's we are assessing a judgment for us to be able to create connection and what makes somebody worthy of connection. And we use trust and respect as measurement tools. But we should at least try to assess how do we use these tools. We should at least kind of understand what is my tool I'm using here so I can have an armor that's adaptable, so I can be proficient and vulnerable and open as, you know, it's a benefit and it's a, it connects us and helps our dynamic grow and also be your warrior type. If you're a mage, listen, stay behind me and blow stuff up around me. If you're a barbarian or you're a paladin or whatever you are, get right up next to me and we're going to hack and slash while our mages blow shit up. If you're a strategist or a Jedi, get creative, talk, give a game plan. Do you guys see the options? And we go, let's try it out, and we see if it's advantageous. And that's what these conversations are. Everybody team up with your strength. Let's see what the commonalities are and how can we grow together. This is a conversation to just, you guys have noticed, how often do people try to break down what is trust? What is respect? What is love? People use abstract terminology and say that's what it is. What is joy? What is leadership? Like we just make up words for like with feelings. It's more subjective than when we started. Happiness, compassion. Like we have these words that we use, but we don't have any definition to them that actually makes sense. Everyone's got a made up definition. Yet somehow I'm pissed off that you don't get it. Well, you can't even explain it. So how the hell am I supposed to get it? You don't even get it. I do believe that I'm with you guys. Trust is given. I give it first. I give it right away. I trust everybody first. And if you show you are untrustworthy, that's okay. You're not going to be the one who puts me down. That's okay. Everybody in here can betray me. I'd be surprised if some of you do. But it wouldn't kill me. It would definitely knock you down into a different tier, though. Because <laughs> some of you guys are in my tier fours and my tier fives. <laughs> and so some of you would be knocked out of those tiers pretty quick. But I think there is a measurement system to this. I think there definitely is. Yeah, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Like, I'd be like, that's okay, that happened. I have to have a different boundary to make it so I'm okay. So how do you start the conversation? I mean, this is obviously something in everybody's heads, but if you go around the world, 
I mean, the, the amount of times a day I hear trust talked about, I mean, I hear it talked about because, you know, we work within coaching and whatnot. So I hear it, but ultimately you don't hear people talking about trust, but like, how do you engage in this conversation or at least engage in the energy, you know? And it's like, I think it's coming and going. Like I put out a trust. So the people at the grocery store are telling me about their mother with cancer and I'm like, holy shit, you know? And so like, you know, but how do I create the conversation, which creates the boundaries, which like, hey, I don't want to hear about your mom with the cancer or like, hey, actually, I do. I want to, to open that space because I can handle it. I just don't know how to start it, you know, and being that I'm the way that I am. You no, know. I think you're adding too much to it. If somebody opened up to you, that's pretty cool. And just like appreciate that for what it is. There's no betrayal there. And if you're if you're if remember when we start off with trust, you give as much as you're willing to lose. Well, that's a, that's a great, that hit the nail right on the head with me because mm -hmm. I'm giving more than I'm willing to lose. And that's where your armor needs to be upgraded. You're, you're overextending and that leaves you vulnerable for damage and you're taking huge hits unnecessarily when huge. like, if you just, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, a, you know, I like, I keep using this tier system. I'm going to give you a tier three level trust. I'll open up, I'll share some things with you, but if you ever use that information incorrectly, that won't be the kill on me. I won't be damaged. I'll just go, oh, okay, that person can't be trusted. Like, I can't trust that one. I'm knocking you down a few tiers. I won't share anything else with you. I've got family members I can't do that with. We only talk about the weather and did you watch a funny video? I'm not telling you anything that's going on because you're reckless and that's okay. I understand where you're at. I'm not mad at you not angry i'm not going into retreat negotiation attack or surrender i'm not doing any of that i just know that with you i have a healthy boundary with how much information or intel that i give and that's okay i mean if you want to be silly in military talk it's you you've knocked yourself where the information that i would share here is a little bit above your pay grade <laughs> that's what my military you can't is. handle the truth sorry <laughs> It's, it's it's above your pay grade. Hey, how are you and Andrea doing? Did you guys work through that thing? I'm like, yeah, everything is fine. We did it. We're good. And that's as much as you're going to get. Because more information than that is above your pay grade. Well, then I think trust would be a, uh, a part on the value system of relation and the depth of your intimacy with someone. So like in the human needs to have connection. And then what is this connection? And then what are the parts of it? I would say the trust. And that's where it's like human need is to like, for me to need that area of trust is to need that connection, you know, and then puts me in a position of outside looking in, which is why I'm like, ah, uh, I don't even know. Right. You know, let me add it in the wrong way. Yeah. It's because you're overextending. But then I got to live without the, you know, I guess it's sitting with, you know, um, and not forcing it, you know, is, is where I need to live now and accepting it that I don't right. have those those, those reciprocal trusting relationships, we, which honestly is, 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 I think hurts humans in a, in a primal way to not be able to be careful with that. It hurts this, this be number careful, four. Be careful, be careful, because if you start making that judgment that if you don't do it the way that I think you should do it, it hurts humans. Like that's not correct. Oh, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like not have just the basic of not having uh, trusting relationships or not sure. having that level of, of engagement Right. But what we're saying is it's not that it's not possible. You just don't start there. Yeah. You okay. don't just go like, hi, good to meet you. You're in my level five. They go, and that's a red flag. This also runs into like the same thing that like, you'll see this behavior run into dark triad behaviors. This is where you see uh, narcissism. Um, you see love bombing. You see things like this where people who show up and they just start going bomb, 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 attention, 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 share, share, love, love, share, share. I want love. And then you're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and we have to pull people back on that because those are red flags too for people who want to try and get in as fast as they can. And then they try and they're actually their goal is to do harm. Well, that's a red flag for people. Again, based on experience, if you have somebody who's like, hi, it's nice to meet you. We should move in together. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> I should be inside of all your routines. Let's get a shared bank account. Oh, I don't like that. No. What are you doing? What's your passwords? Like, whoa, hold on, hold on. <laughs> What's happening? But it, can it be, can it be kind of fun? I mean, 
at least from the world I come from with the West Coast, kind of like openness is like, it can be kind of fun to open trust and be like, show up in a group. Like, I don't know you guys. I'm trusting you now with my information. So do you want to give everybody your bank account number and your social? I mean, it's for me, it's like, <laughs> no, I don't. But well, that's, that's a level of trust. It just doesn't make any sense to just go like, hey, here's my info. That's a, that's a good metaphor, actually, because what I was about to say jokingly is it wouldn't do them any good. So it's like I'm giving out my bank account. I'm giving oh, out my trust because there's not enough value in it. You, know? you don't there's know enough stupid. about identity theft to understand how much damage can be done with somebody's ID. And it doesn't have to be taking a, a deposit or a withdrawal out. This can be completely like I've seen where I worked at uh, uh, those types of companies where they would have to repair people's identity. Yeah, it's all fun and games until somebody takes all of your information and makes a child pornography site. It's all fun and games until now you're you're a federal you're a federal pris prisoner, and you're like I had nothing to do with it. They're like, is this your source? Is this your address? Is this your email? Is this your name? Is this you? And you're like, well, those are all me. That's the person who owns this account. All fun and games. Then this has got nothing to do with the withdrawal. My dad had to uh, dispute a house he owned in Texas. He didn't buy that house. Wow. You think, you, I mean, they could just take your information, run all of this stuff to start like putting loans out and credit stuff in their name and all that kind of stuff. They'll start just applying for a thousand things in your name. Happened to me, mm -hmm. happened to me in Florida when I went to the hospital down there because they used back in the day Medicare to use your social and stuff. I had to file with the IRS and a whole bunch of shit after that. That's real. You're just saying as far as like giving out that level of trust, there's consequences beyond more than did you take my last ten dollars. You know, and this is why people do have to go like, what level do I have you at? What tier level is this? How much armor do I have in this dynamic? How much do I open up right away? Because people will do harm that's more than financial. So we just have to be aware of it. I don't give more than I'm okay with losing. Until people go, listen, I will I'll ride or die with you, bro. I'm all in. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll give you a little more. And let's see how it goes. And if it goes well, I'm like, I know that I don't even have to wear armor with this person. That's, I think it's a select group. It's a small group, but this is the way that it, like, I feel completely at peace. I don't feel any, I don't have any anger, any resentment, any, any negativity. I don't have any, it, I'm not filled with doubt. I'm not filled with fear. I don't have anxiety. I don't have any of these things around this system because healthy boundaries and knowing myself has made it so my armor is adaptable, flexible, solid, and works exactly for my warrior type. And if you wear my exact armor, it will not work for you because you're a mage. So you have to figure out your armor type, and that may be protective, you know, force field bubble while I'm wearing plate mail and a shield. Those are two different things, both effective. Hey, Rick. Yeah, what's up, Doc? Hey, I was just wondering if I could share something that happened like nine years ago in my life. It changed my whole entire life. And it's hard to trust people because it's hard to even say. So I want to make a joke when people ask permission for this stuff, but I won't because normally I just go, no, we're trust out nobody. of time, bud. We're out of time. We don't have any more time. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, but let's, no. let's hear your thing. Let's do it. If you're going to, if you're going to open up and you're going to do a, you're going to push a tear with us. Let's respect that. So absolutely, man. It, it's it, it's going to hit hard home, man. So it's it, it changed my whole life. It gave me PTSD. It gave me traumatic shit in my life that I just got to keep pushing forward and, and forgive myself. I can't forgive myself. I have anger from it. I have fear. I have fucking just tumbles up on me. 